In the next part of the game, I want to a touch on is, is jackal work. When you played, obviously you could make a tackle, stay in there, and just pop back to your feet and, and get your, get your turnover. Um, things have changed a little bit since then. You, you came into, like I said, the, the target gym. You had um, people doing Swiss ball drills and rolling around and, and getting to their feet in unique ways. Um, you, you still put a lot of emphasis on that across the board with, with players. Um. It, not not um, with all players, Brainy. I, I don't think um, putting your head over the ball and waiting to get hit is everyone's cup of tea. Um, yeah, I agree. <laughs> there's, there's, <laughs> there's, de- <laughs> there's definitely a mindset of people that love it and want to get better. So those are the people that um, I enjoy working with. I think trying to train people that aren't big on getting there, um, you know, guys like yourself probably, like um, you, you, the, your expertise is not not – that area and and largely you don't want your your teens who are controlling games to be stuck at the bottom of dark places you want those guys up looking controlling you know organizing that sort of thing so i think the first thing is if people love it and want to get better they're the people you work with because they've got the they've got the intrinsic motivation to do it well and get better um trying to change someone's psyche from not wanting to do it to do it is is quite a big ask and then yeah. for them to do it well is that you know another step on top. So I know there's the concept of get everyone's skill sets good, but for most teams, not at the highest level, uh, I think it's it's bigger bang for your buck to get the, the people that want to do it better rather than trying to get those that don't want to do it to actually do it in the first place is yeah. is better bang for your buck. So at the moment, we're playing a game. A tackle's happened right in front of me where I can go in and have a crack at a jackal. What are some of the, the tips or advice you're giving or, or things you're seeing players often get wrong or going off their feet or just not staying in the fight to, to win that turnover? Yeah, I think... Um... The, the decisions you, well, you make need to be, in terms of getting the ball, need to be automatic. If you have to think about what you have to do, um, you're probably not going to get it. Mm. So getting that instinctiveness to see the picture, which is someone falling, and it's like, I guess the image is like a tree falling. Um, and if if you can get players knowing that they're, they're racing towards where the tree is going to fall is, mm. is quite a nice analogy. So you see someone falling in a tackle, that's where you need to get to. And if you can get them with the ball on their chest, that's when you're on. So th- that's the decision making we coach is if you can get to a point, you can get there early in good position, you can keep that ball on someone's chest so they can't long place, mm-hmm. then that's a jackal opportunity. Then the techniques around that is uh, you dig like a dog digging in the sand, you know, just get furious on keeping the ball on the chest and, twisting and turning and getting that ball up. Mm-hmm. If you're not there in time and the ball's out, the instinctive thing needs to be, you're not going to be able to steal that easily. That That's where you need to take the space or, or take out a target. Um, getting those decisions automatic so people don't have to think. They know, oh, I've trapped it here. That's a jackal. Or I haven't trapped it there. That's a take space or reset in the defensive line. Getting those decisions make uh, is sort of sort of the key. That's where you can get everyone good, yeah. um, just on those decisions. And so players will go, "Oh, I haven't made it defense," or "Oh, yes, that's jackal." Yeah. And then the best players will get the jackal. The the, the not so good players might get a penalty. They might um, just do enough to slow it down. Hundred percent. And with kicking, there's off often trends. Say, for, say for instance, in the women's game, we, we're trying to de- develop more power and extension behind the kick and the in the drawback, like the golf swing. When you're drawing the club back, we're trying to create more energy and power there. Um, is there anything that's common that's restricting jacklers' hip mobility, flexibility, that that type of thing? That's a, a trend you're seeing. Um, I, I, I think um, this is the concept I enjoy, Brenny, is that um, a, a jackal is actually a really dynamic uh, activity. There's a lot of small incremental movements in there. Um, you often see big boys just simply dump over and just stay like, you know, like feet in concrete, oh, I'm not moving. And if you're 150 kilos, that's 
fine, you're probably going to get away with it. But for most people, to simply just stand there and be a target and just see if you can weather it, like a bull, two bulls sort of colliding, one's just yeah. standing there, one's getting... For me, that's that's something which a lot of people think is just shut eyes and just stay. But the, <laughs> I think is uh, is kind of the small little movements you can do to shrug incoming collisions off. Um, small adjustments of the feet, small adjustments of the shoulders and back and arms can do wonders. Uh, I, I like this analogy where Ooh, yeah. your feet are like. Uh, in Japan, they build houses on sort of small shingle and rocks and stones. So when the earthquakes come, the house the houses move. They have a bit of a gift. Yeah. And then when the, the quake comes, they're actually able to weather it. And it's kind of the same when you're in that vulnerable position where you're bent over. Someone's going to collide with you, like give you a real big knock. If you're haven't got the ability just to move and have that little bit of yeah. core that little bit of dynamic to absorb and shrug off impacts you can actually stay in there longer if your foundation your building is like there's no give when the quake comes the building simply cracks and topples yeah and same when you get hit in a rock like if you're just anchored and you're not 150 kilos bang you get blown out if you've got a little bit of give and you can twist that guy might shoot over the top or twist around the corner or enter into a different sort of clean out that's where there's a lot of that's the art to to jackling i believe is the the small movements you can do Mm. in those very dark horrible places (laughs) 